My kitchen is something that I've come to appreciate more and more over the years. I've learned to cook in it. I start each morning here and is the place where I can make something nourishing for others. Hello, I'm Matthew Encina, and in this video, I'll share the simple DIY makeover and organization process of my kitchen. Before I begin, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, The Home Depot, a one-stop shop for the products and services you need to complete your home improvement projects. Everything you'll see in this video will be explained in more detail on my blog, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. Since I moved into my place 10 years ago, my kitchen has stayed the same. Over the past year, I've been progressively updating the other parts of my home and I finally made it around to my kitchen. When I looked into it, a full kitchen remodel can get expensive real quick, and I wasn't ready to commit a massive amount of money towards the space, especially because everything still works well. So for this reason, I wanted to approach this project in a way that was low cost and easy to do. Overall, I wanted to give my kitchen a facelift by reducing the visual clutter and go for a minimal aesthetic. I started by pulling references online and eventually decided to go for a black and white look for my kitchen. Then I used the Home Depot app where I was able to find everything I needed for the project. I priced everything out and then placed my order for delivery. The Home Depot offers free delivery on over a million items and has flexible delivery options, including in-store pickup. Within a few days, my order arrived at my door and I was ready to begin. I started with my kitchen backsplash, which I wanted to update with white subway tiles. To keep things simple, I purchased these peel and stick tiles that could go directly over the existing busy green tile pattern. At first, I was hesitant to go this direction because it felt a little cheap, but the reviews for this product were so good that I thought I'd give it a shot. The process for installing these is pretty straightforward. Clean your surface, hold the tile up to the wall for sizing, cut it with a sharp utility knife, then peel and firmly stick onto the surface. If you make an alignment mistake, you can easily peel the tile back off and adjust it. I have a few tips if you do this yourself. One, change your blades often. Always use a sharp blade to keep your cuts clean and avoid frayed edges. Two, order a little extra material. I made a few cutting mistakes in the process. Luckily, using the Home Depot project calculator, it recommended I order about 10% more than I needed. When I was done, I was able to return my unopened items. Three, save your scraps. I was able to use many of my offcuts to fill in the odd gaps that didn't need a whole tile. The whole backsplash process took me a total of four hours to complete on my own. When I was done, I was very impressed with the results. It immediately brightened up the kitchen, and from afar, you couldn't even tell that these weren't real tiles. The next part of the project was to update my kitchen faucet. What I had before was starting to get loose, and I wasn't into the chrome look of it. I've never replaced a faucet before, and the idea of me doing plumbing work was pretty intimidating. Luckily with the Home Depot app, I was able to find a step-by-step -step guide for the entire process. This included how to identify what kind of sink I had, the parts and tools needed, and had an easy to follow video and written tutorial. They have many more how-to guides to help you on your next DIY project. I wanted to go for a matte black look for my faucet and accessories, so I got this one from Glacier Bay. I like its beautiful finish, minimal features, and spray function. Installing this was a lot easier than I thought it would be. From start to end, this took me an hour and a half from learning about the process to being completely done with it. I even swapped out my soap dispenser and air gap cap to match the black faucet. To continue with the minimal black and white look, I moved on to change out the cabinet handles. The ones I originally had were a bit clunky looking and drew a lot of attention to them visually. So I swapped them out for these black knurled handles, which anyone can do with just a screwdriver. I also updated these wall plates on my electrical receptacles to these screwless covers for a cleaner look. All of these small details made such a huge difference in the overall aesthetic of the kitchen. This along with the white subway tiles simplified the look with less visual clutter by creating clean horizontal lines. The next part of the project was to update the overhead lighting. Originally, I had these old CFL can lights that were so harsh looking. Luckily, with the help of my brother, who's an electrician, I was able to upgrade these to smart LEDs, which were much softer in appearance because they were diffused, dimmable, and I could fine tune the temperature of them from my phone. The last part of this project was to clean, organize, and style the kitchen. 
I thought this was going to be the easiest part, but it ended up taking the longest. I started by doing a deep clean of everything, scrubbing off old grease off of my appliances and thoroughly cleaning all of the surfaces. Then I did a full reorganization of my drawers and cabinets. I took everything out to assess what I had. I got rid of anything I didn't need and consolidated where I could. I then installed a few drawers and accessories in my cabinets to make better use of my space. This gave me extra room in my cabinets to put away appliances that I originally had on my countertop. For styling purposes, I splurged a little on a few accessories that would be visible often. I thought it would be too stark and sterile if everything were just black and white, so I made sure to add a few pops of acacia wood to give a nice natural accent to the space. This whole process took two weeks to reconfigure everything so that it was both functional and beautiful. Now with everything completed, I'll share the final results. The whole project took about three weeks on and off to complete. In total, I spent under $1,000 on the tiles, lights, and faucet, and another few hundred dollars on the accessories throughout. Now I spend more time in here, cooking frequently, and to my surprise, I've been able to keep it clean and maintained. Since reorganizing, all my kitchen items now have a proper home and everything just flows. I have easier access to my most used tools and ingredients, and I have more counter space to work on when cooking which is made for a better experience all around. If you're looking to update your own kitchen using the ideas here, I've created a detailed breakdown of the project, which includes links to the materials and products I used to complete it. I'll leave a link to the blog post in the description below. If you have any questions, ask, and I'll do my best to answer. I wanna say thank you again to The Home Depot for sponsoring this video and making this DIY project possible. The Home Depot makes home improvement convenient through service, delivery, returns, and tool rentals. With that out of the way, it's time to get back to work. <laughs>